In this lesson, we're going to start talking about what it means to learn about optics. And optics is going to be all about light, but there's actually a lot of different pieces to that understanding of light. So for this one, we're going to focus ourselves on these four topics. What is light? What are some of the properties of waves? Because we do talk about light waves. What do we mean by the electromagnetic spectrum? And finally, the wave model of light. And some of those things are going to overlap one another quite a bit. Um, so we might not have separate sections on each individual thing. But I want to go back first to grade 9 science, where in grade 9 science you learned that matter was anything that had mass and took up space, which was a way of saying if it has mass and volume. And one of the things you learned about in grade 9 was pretty much everything that you can see, touch, hold, feel, um, all of those things are matter. Even things that you cannot necessarily see or touch, like air, uh, you can put in a balloon and it definitely takes up space. So almost everything is matter, but what about things that aren't matter? Well, one of the main things that would be not matter, and I shouldn't even say things that are not matter, but energy. So when we talk about energy, light is a form of energy. Sound is a form of energy. Those things are not made up of matter. They do not contain mass, and they do not take up space. Electricity would be another thing that is not made up of matter. So to start our discussion with talking about sound, sound is a form of energy that is detectable by the ear, or detectable to the ear. I think by the ear sounds better. And what happens is if you watch a speaker vibrating, then it's pushing air, and that air then starts to compress, and it transmits the energy to our ear. We're not really talking about sound waves, though. We want to talk about light waves, where light, you would maybe think that it is a form of energy that is detectable by the eye. And at one point in our history, we actually did think that, but we don't think that anymore. Or I should say it this way, we've expanded our understanding so that we now talk about light as being something more than just what we can see. So light is now a form of energy. Um, can't even read my own writing. Light is a form of energy, but the kind of energy that makes what we see, uh, and also then there's other versions of it. So the, the I want to say stuff, the, the things that make up um, light energy that we can see also makes up other things that we don't really call light, but we understand them to be the same form, the same, I want to say substance, but they're not a substance. All right, let's try and make this make some sense. We're going to start with energy where light travels in the form of waves. We talk about light waves, we talk about sound waves. Now, there are different kinds of waves, so we're going to stop talking about sound and just focus on light. The light wave would look something like this. And then we can do different things. We can stretch it, we can squish it, we can do other things to that. Now, we want to understand or we want to talk about the parts of the wave. And there's terms that you're going to need to know. Um, I'm not so big on the trough thing, but the peaks, uh, wavelength, the amplitude, those are important points or, or important uh, terms with this associated with light energy and light waves. So we want to know what those are. When it comes to light, the wavelength of that light, so how long it was between, let's go back to there for a second, from one peak to another peak, how long that distance was, that distance is the wavelength, and that is going to turn, or that is going to tell us something about the color of the light, the distance between two peaks. There's also something called frequency. Now, frequency also relates to the color of light. Now, I didn't have frequency labeled on there because frequency is a little bit different. If you were standing there watching light waves go by and you were counting peaks, how fast are you counting? You're counting one, two, three, four, or are you counting one, two, three, four, five, six? Are you counting peaks going by very quickly, or are you counting peaks going by very slowly? And the thing about the counting those peaks is the wave is not moving different speeds, but because of the wave length, it looks like it. Ah, that's kind of weird, I know. And then we did have amplitude, and amplitude is going to be related more to brightness, how tall it is, how much uh, light, not how color, but how bright it is. And that was the height of each one of those peaks. 
So if we kind of look at how waves and color, I said two th things affected the color. If we look at red all the way down to violet, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, those are the main colors of light in the rainbow. We can see that the red waves are stretched out and the violet waves are closer together. In other words, the wave length of the red wave is longer, the wave length of the violet wave is shorter. So that's worth knowing. The other thing is it's backwards between wavelength and frequency. So in other words, a short wavelength means a high frequency. If you were counting the peaks in the top one where the wavelength is very short, you're counting more peaks. If you're counting peaks in the bottom one where the wavelength is longer, you're counting fewer peaks. So high wavelength, low frequency, and then the other way around. Amplitude, we can have uh, tall, we can have short, and again, as I mentioned, it's really just a matter of brightness when we're talking about light, but just so you know the two different uh, ways that we can do that. Okay, electromagnetic spectrum. If I took all of the things that kind of operate in that wavelength uh, traveling thing with, wave, uh, with frequency and amplitude and all that, if I look at all the things that, that can be considered light, then the part that I can see, the visible part, is actually a really, really tiny piece of it. And I've expanded it on the bottom, but it fits into a really small wavelength range. But on the opposite ends of that, on the far, on the long wavelength, I have things like radio waves and, and radar waves. Then I get into microwaves, and I get into infrared, and then I get into visible, and then I get into ultraviolet x-rays and gamma rays. And we'll kind of look at some of the details of those uh, separately from this, but all of those things can be considered to be forms of light. But I can only see a small piece of that. Okay, what do we need to know about the spectrum? Well, a couple of things. One is that idea of different colors, different types, different things that I can call light are all based on the wavelength or the frequency. I'm going to kind of focus on wavelength in most cases because I find that easier for me. I want you to understand that the visible section is actually really quite small. And I also want you to know what those six colors are. Now, at some point, you may have heard seven colors. You might have heard Roy G. Biv. Um, we just more or less go with Roy G. Biv when we leave the I out of Biv. Um, I think you should know that each section has uses, and I'm going to get you to look up different technologies that we can use for radio waves, or which is kind of obvious, or microwaves, which isn't as obvious as you might think, although, yeah, one obvious example, uh, and infrared waves, and or some of the other ones too. So I'm not going to limit myself to technologies that use these three, but any one of those things, any one of those groups of light or those types of light can have technologies that we make use of. So, etc. and the rest. Okay. This was a bit of a whirlwind, but I'll need you to be doing some work, and I just wanted to introduce it uh, right now. So I want you to be able to, to, to draw and label a, a, a light wave or a wave. Uh, list the colors of light and then identify the technologies. And I know you can't necessarily do all the technologies right now, but by the time we're done this piece, you should be able to. And we'll talk to you another time.